How's it going everyone? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. In this video, we're going to be going over this article here. Pauline Hansen has made the news once again. This time, she's arguing that people should be allowed to climb Ayers Rock, which is a big rock in the middle of the Northern Territory outback. Traditionally, people have been able to climb, but it's now being closed to climbers in October of this year. Pauline Hansen disagrees with that, and we're going to go over this article right now. Just a quick message. Whether it's an algorithm hiding content or outright deletion, internet censorship is on the rise. Please consider following me on free speech websites Gab, Minds, and BitChute. I'm constantly posting content, and they are a great way to stay notified of uploads. Can't wait to see you there. So One Nation's Pauline Hansen compares closing Ayers Rock to shutting down Bondi Beach. So what she's actually said is that closing the climb of Ayers Rock because a few people died, which has happened, I think about 35 odd people have died on the climb over the last few decades, but closing the climb because of that would be like closing Bondi Beach or any beach because someone drowned. And I think her argument is actually sound there. Closing the climb just because a few people who knew the risks were not healthy enough to climb up there or maybe didn't take enough water or maybe they did something stupid and they fell or whatever it is, that's not a reason to close it. But anyway, she said, the article said that is, today's show has been lashed for debating Ayers Rock and the panel has a conspicuous problem that soon became apparent. What might that problem be? Why would it be a problem that someone might be debating Ayers Rock, which they strangely call Uluru? It's Ayers Rock. But anyway, in almost three months, the climb up Uluru will be closed for good. But the decision to shut the hour long hike is stirring debate. One Nation's Pauline Hansen and radio host Steve Price appeared on today this morning to argue why the second rock should stay open to climbers. And good on them. I think it should stay open to climbers. Telling people, no, you cannot climb this naturally formed rock for whatever reason is just... It's bizarre. Sure, you can say, be careful. It's dangerous. But... It's a rock that formed naturally, and it's in the middle of the desert, essentially. So by banning people from climbing that is just ridiculous. There's no logical reason to stop people from climbing it. There's no good reason to stop that happening. So good on Steve Price and Pauline Hansen for arguing against it. But as this is clown world, and as we are dominated by far-left anti-white bigots, they did have something else to say. But the breakfast show's choice of having Price and Miss Hansen, both Caucasian Australians, debate the topic alongside today host Deb Knight, also a Caucasian Australian, has been lashed on social media. Isn't that interesting? First of all, I've never heard this term Caucasian Australian before. I don't know what a Caucasian Australian is, because if you're talking about a white Australian individual, or per, at least a person of Anglo descent, or a person of European descent from, in that our ancestors were in Europe a thousand, two thousand years ago, that's just Australian, not Caucasian Australian. Don't try and divide us up with all these other non-Australians who have been brought over here in the name of multiculturalism. It's not Caucasian Australian, it's just Australian. But we can see in that particular phrase the agenda of the mainstream media they should just say australian but now we can see the so-called problem that's apparent it's not that she's arguing that people should be allowed to climb the rock it's that she is white funny how they actually think that they are the good guys in all this it's just pure anti-whiteism I and mean, you could even call it racism but we, we reject that word it's actually just anti-white bigotry. Taking to Twitter, dozens of Australians described the debate as racist and unbalanced. Oh, just, it's just so silly. Because they happen to be white Australians, apparently they're not allowed to have an opinion about 
a rock that formed naturally millions of years ago. Ridiculous. So Benjamin Law, who's not an Australian. Australia, you are exhausting. Oh no. And then he's posted it here. And then this bloke here, Jonathan Green, has said, let's talk Uluru climbing with Pauline Hanson and Steve Price. Could they find anyone wider? Or couldn't they find anyone wider? And so what? Australia was founded as a white country. They are Australians. Ayers Rock is in Australia. Of course they have a right to discuss this and trying to dismiss their arguments based on their ethnic heritage is just horrendous. Isn't that what these leftists are supposed to be fighting against? Obviously not. They're actually anti-white. So we're not, they're not hypocrites. They are anti-white. So again, this is that conspicuous problem. And what they said here was, notice it was dozens of Australians according to news.com like who cares dozens of australians way more people climb the rock probably in the last month and let's have a look here and we've got another one never watch either the today show or sunrise because of the lack of any sort of reasons or balanced discussion plus they are just boring no prizes for guessing what pauline hansen or steve price thought on the use of issues so predictable virtue signal virtue signal virtue signal blah 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 oh how could they possibly allow people with opinions that Malcolm Assel doesn't like? How could they possibly actually have a genuine discussion? You know, mainstream media who are, by all accounts and all evidence, extremely biased to the left, actually having a discussion with people who disagree with the leftist paradigm. Oh my God, it's just too much to handle. And then this one said, if by exhausting you mean hello racist, then yeah, so he's responding to Benjamin Law who said you are exhausting. Just ridiculous, just childish anti-white bigotry. It's racist to want to climb a rock because we'll see in a minute. And anyway, so Yawuru woman, Shannon Dodson, who works as an indigenous affairs advisor for media diversity in Australia and is on the committee for NAI DOC week, whatever that is, said Uluru should have the same significance as any other of the world's sacred sites. Why? It's a rock. Sure, you might have a special connection to it. Okay, let's say you have a special spiritual connection to this rock. Whatever, okay. That doesn't mean you get to tell people who are in the area, no, you're not allowed to climb it. It is a naturally forming rock that is technically owned by the Australian people. I know that the Australian government in the 80s gave title over it to this group of people, but they were supposed to manage it in conjunction with the Australian government. They have now said, no, nope, you're not allowed to walk up this rock because we consider it sacred. Their feelings are hurt when you walk up it. I mean, what a load of crap. Give me a break. Why do their feelings trump the enjoyment of hundreds or thousands of people who might want to climb the rock? But she says, quote, the issue around climbing Uluru is that it is a sacred place. And at the end of the day, when you see how much the world rallied around the destruction of Notre Dame and how significant that is, people understand there are sacred places based around culture and religion. The fact that you can't then translate that to Uluru having the same significance is undermining. Well, there is a fairly big difference between Notre Dame and that is that people actually built Notre Dame and it took literally generations to build. And it's a magnificent piece of art. Whereas Ayers Rock, otherwise known as Uluru, according to some, but it's actually Ayers Rock, was a naturally forming rock. Just because you go up and say, well, I feel spiritually connected to this rock, doesn't mean you get to tell other people they're not allowed to climb it. What if their spiritual connection to the rock involves climbing it? Again, why is it that your feelings and your, your culture and values are superior to others? Why should we bow down to you? Why, is your, why are you better than everyone? But it's funny, she's already got this, she's already got this covered. It's, she says, quote, For me... It feels like Western cultures and values are always elevated above other cultures and values. It's saying Aboriginal cultures and values are less important. It's just a thinking that we're less than them and that our culture and values don't matter. Oh, didums. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, woe to the, to the poor victim people whose culture isn't valued as much as, say, Western culture that built Notre Dame hundreds of years ago. Or... 
broad electricity. We're in Western culture. We have longer life expectancies than most places. We used to have more freedom than most places. And when people think of Western values and Western culture, they do actually think of liberty, despite the fact that we have a ever-growing police state. Western culture is objectively better than Aboriginal culture. I'm not hating on Aboriginal people. I don't hate Aboriginal culture or, or Aboriginal people. But Western culture is objectively better than Aboriginal culture. And isn't it funny that she's writing this in English, or it's been spoken in English and published in a Western newspaper. Don't you just find that really interesting? Stop playing the victim. We are allowed to climb this rock if we want to, or at least we should be. But this is what I found interesting. I also wanted to put it in because it, it just tells you the mindset of these people and just how manipulative they are and just emotional manipulators. So in the 12 months to June 2019, more than 395,000 people visited the Ayers Rock National Park, according to Parks Australia, about 20% more than the previous year. Yet, just 13% of those who visited also climbed the rock, the government agency says. Is it interesting? So the number's quite low compared to how many people actually go there. And we'll see here. So this is actually the reason they're closing the rock. It's the justification that they've given. So they said plans to close the once popular climb have been in place since 2010, when a 10-year plan for the park announced the climb would be closed as soon as fewer than 20% of visitors actually climbed the rock. Later statistics from 2015 show that 16.2% of visitors climbed Ayers Rock in 1990s. 74% of visitors were climbing Ayers Rock with tourists visiting the Red Centre since the 1950s. Just a, it's another article from a couple of years ago just saying why that they're, they're going to close it. Now, I wanted to point this out because let's just have a look at the last line. From 2011 to 2015, the climb was closed 77% of the time due to dangerous weather conditions or cultural reasons. So they've closed the climb because people aren't climbing. And apparently it's dangerous, even though it's our choice. But the reason to justify it was that not enough people were climbing. But not enough people are climbing because they closed... The climb, 77% of the time, and lots of those times, it was for cultural reasons or weather conditions. I'm sure that they would just say, oh, it's this might happen, so we're going to close it. And then when that excuse runs short, they just say cultural reasons. So funny how a large <laughs> there's been a large drop-off in the number of people who have climbed the rock, given how often they've closed it. That's just how manipulative they are. They don't want anyone to climb it. They want to deny people the, the joy of climbing to the top of this naturally forming rock that really isn't actually owned by anyone because, let's face it, it's a naturally forming rock in the middle of the desert. But they want to deny people the enjoyment of doing that for, you know... I, I, I suspect they just wanted to stick it to, to the white man. I think that's actually a big reason that they want to do it. Change my mind on that. I think that's probably the most likely reason, even if they didn't want to admit it. Be, it's just a vindictive move to cut everyone's enjoyment. If you ask me, I think that's the honest answer, regardless of what they have to say. Keep the rock open. We should be allowed to climb it. It's the property of no one, really. And, hell, it's a giant rock. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you are sharing it around because YouTube are not going to help at all. And if you can see the painting in the background, yes, this is still for sale. I'm just going to leave it up there until someone is awesome enough to buy it and we'll get it delivered to you. It's actually an original piece of fine art painted by my wife. It is an excellent piece of art. will lighten up any room. Please send me an email at Maddie's Modern Life at Proton Mail. And I'll see ya when I see ya.